afternoon, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Michelle Nelson, and I'm the social media specialist here at Field Routes. Thank you for taking time out of your day today to join us for Improve United to Beat Malaria, Tangible Business Benefits, featuring Jonathan Kidwell, Senior Officer of Partnerships and Development at United to Beat Malaria. Before we get started, I'll give you a little bit of background on him. Jonathan Kidwell works with corporate partners from multiple industries to develop creative, impactful, and engaging campaigns that raise awareness and funds to fight one of the world's oldest and deadliest diseases, malaria. Over his more than 15 years of working in partnership management, Kidwell has developed a track record of growing partnerships that meet partner goals while enhancing mission impact. In his current role, he collaborates with pest management professionals to elevate their work as protectors of public health in the U.S. and around the world, while also protecting families and saving lives in the fight against malaria. Welcome, Jonathan. Sorry about that. Um, so I, again, just a quick bit about me. Um, three important things in my life, family. I have two young kids, a seven-year-old girl and a four-year-old boy and lots of family close by. So we're lucky in that way. And uh, although it may seem odd to include here, uh, pancakes are a big part of my identity. I love to make them. My kids love to eat them. I would say if you haven't done it, I definitely recommend a Reese's peanut butter cup pancake. That is uh, my signature pancake and definitely a hit with kids. And then the third circle there at the bottom, partnerships to end malaria. That's my professional life. And that's what I do every day with companies uh, from around the country and around the world to raise awareness, to raise funds, to provide life-saving critical malaria commodities for families around the world. What you see intentionally excluded from that slide, from that Venn diagram, uh, are cave crickets. I hate those things. Unfortunately, we get them in our basement. Um, they're ugly and they jump around unpredictably and they just are not something I like to deal with. So I leave them out. All right, a bit about what we'll cover today. Um, I'll start with who is United to Beat Malaria. Uh, that might seem like an interesting way to phrase that but it is really the people of this campaign, the partners, the donors, the advocates, the community health workers that really make our work possible. So talking about who is United to Beat Malaria, I'll then go over some examples of how partnerships can help your company. So talking about how partnerships can help you improve sales, how partnerships can help you with recruitment. I know that is a challenge in the industry. It's a, it's a tough time for a number of industries is to bring on quality, employees to help you do your work every day. And then talk a bit about how you can keep those employees through leveraging your partnerships with nonprofits that you have locally, regionally, uh, or even internationally. I'll go over some partnership examples, uh, examples of how partner partners engage with us and provide some details or some thoughts on how uh, PCOs, how you might choose to engage with us uh, in the coming months. And then obviously close with my contact information to, if you want to reach out with any additional questions. Uh, this brings us to our first poll question. Uh, so for those of you uh, watching, does your company have any organizations that you partner with on a regular basis? So any nonprofits, any community groups, charities that you have ongoing re relationships with and ongoing partnerships with? So pause here for... Uh, a few seconds and let those answers come in. Give it about 10 more seconds. All right, 
No. Okay. Um, so hopefully over the course of the presentation today, uh, I might give you some things to think about and some opportunities uh, that you can have in mind when you're talking to potential partners or if this is something you're considering uh, down the road. So again, kind of thinking about the who of United to Beat Malaria, that really starts with uh, Rick Riley. <clears throat> Rick was a Sports Illustrated author at the time in 2006 when he wrote a article for his Life of Riley column called Nothing But Nets. And in that article, he wrote about how he had been writing about the wrong kinds of nets. He was writing about baseball nets and tennis nets and soccer nets. And at that time in 2006, had learned that a child was dying from malaria, a preventable, treatable mosquito-borne disease, about every 30 seconds. And that all it took to maybe help save their life, to help give them a safe night's sleep, and to provide some peace of mind for their parents uh, was a, a $10 insecticide-treated bed net that they could sleep under to have a safe night's sleep. And for about the first 10 years of the campaign, that was the work of nothing but nets, to raise money, to raise awareness, and turn that into insecticide-treated bed nets that were provided to families across Sub-Saharan Africa. About 2017, uh, our organization received a grant to expand that work into Latin America and the Caribbean. And with that expansion, we're able to tell kind of two sides of the fight against malaria. The first side in Sub-Saharan Africa is that there is still tremendous work to be done. Sub-Saharan Africa has about 95% of the world's global malaria burden, uh, and then on the other side of the coin, kind of the other side of the spectrum, there are a number of countries in Latin America and Caribbean who have achieved elimination status in the last few years, including Argentina, El Salvador, Paraguay, and just this year, Belize. And there are additional countries with caseloads under 1,000, and that is often looked at as a good benchmark for a country that is ready to, to eliminate malaria. In 2019 was kind of the next key moment for the campaign, and that's when we started to talk about our work as being intervention agnostic. So donors and partners were now not just providing bed nets, but were providing indoor residual spray and testing and treatment and preventative medication for pregnant women and supporting community health workers. Uh, the agenda slide I showed had a, had a photo of uh, a woman named Victoria, and we had the chance to interview Victoria in 2021 and she is a community health worker and reproductive uh, nurse manager in Borno State, Nigeria. And part of that conversation, uh, Victoria was asked, what would it mean for your community to not have malaria? And the way her face lights up here, I can actually go back and show you. Uh, so that's Victoria. And the way her face lights up, just the authenticity of that thought of imagining a community, imagining a country for her where she didn't have to deal with malaria and pregnant women would come in and be able to have healthy full-term pregnancies and young children would not be sick and missing school. So community health workers are a big part of the work and a big, um, uh, a big group that donors and partners support, which leads to the name change last year from nothing but nets to United to Beat Malaria. And so that's just a recognition that donors and partners are providing more than bed nets. Bed nets are still critical, bed nets are still effective, they're still cost effective, but there are other tools that might be more effective in a certain setting. Uh, and I like to talk about that as kind of our, our way of thinking about integrated pest management. What is the best tool in the right setting with the, minimum, with the least number of side impacts and so how can we fund that? How can we make those possible for more communities? This slide here has uh, an overview of what donors and partners have helped make possible over the last 17 years of nothing but nets and now United to Beat Malaria. And that is reaching and protecting over 40 million people across the world in 60 countries by raising and donating $75 million and that works out to over 13 million bed nets and other critical interventions. And another who uh, of the campaign that I can emphasize here is who donors and partners are reaching with their funds. And it is an emphasis on the most vulnerable. And that's pregnant women, children under five. Uh, and unfortunately, a child under five still dies about every minute. So even though we've reduced the malaria mortality rate by about 40% since 2000, the child under five still dies about every minute. Displaced populations are also particularly susceptible 
Uh, if you're forced to leave because of an extreme weather event or conflict, you often aren't able to take the resources with you to be able to protect yourself from malaria. So reaching, identifying, and protecting uh, vulnerable displaced people is also a key element of our work. And then, of course, uh, the community health workers uh, I mentioned previously. So here you have a, uh, a synopsis, again, a highlighting insecticide-treated bed nets, uh, diagnostic and treatment services, protective uh, medication for pregnant women, and indoor residual spraying. And all of these have come about uh, or have been improved in the last few years to address and tackle insecticide resistance, which is a key issue for the global malaria community. On the right there, you have uh, an excerpt from one of our donor impact reports kind of showing you how all of this comes together uh, in a portfolio of work. So this is uh, specific to work that happened last year, uh, 2022 in South Sudan. So nearly 34,000 children were reached uh, and able to go to school and stay healthy. About 12,000 bed nets were distributed. About 8,900 pregnant women were reached and given preventative medication to ensure that they could have safe and healthy pregnancies. And then about 290,000 people received malaria education and malaria prevention uh, education. So second polling question, how much does it cost to test and treat a child for malaria? $5 A, B is $10, C is $20, and D is $25. So I'll give a few seconds for answers here. Give it another 10 seconds. Oh, split vote. Correct answer is $10. It is uh, about $10 to uh, provide a diagnosis and then treat a child for malaria. And that is, I think, one of the appealing parts of our campaign is that impact can be had at relatively low price points. We talk about a bed net, which in 2006 was $10. It's now about $5 to purchase and deliver that bed net. And then testing and treating a child is $10. And so you have these accessible price points for donors and partners to make an impact in this fight and protect kids and protect vulnerable populations. Okay, so I, uh, I'm guessing you get it, that children, pregnant women should not be dying from a preventable and treatable disease. Uh, there's a lot more that we can do, but it just should not be happening. But at the same time, you also have a business to run and you need to be worried about growing your business, scaling your business and providing a great environment for your employees and a great culture. And I think there are ways that partnerships like partnerships that you might already have or a partnership with us can help with that. So I wanna spend this section the next few minutes kind of talking about how partnerships with your nonprofit organizations can help you improve sales, can help you attract top quality talent, talent and then improve your retention to keep that team together, to keep that strong culture going. So the first point here about uh, improving sales uh, can lead with a great quote here from a franchise owner from Mosquito Joe of South Shore, Long Island, Dennis Stein. Uh, and this was uh, 2021, I think, with our Beat the Blood Suckers campaign during Mosquito Control Awareness Week coming up. Uh, and in that campaign, Mosquito Joe franchises, participating franchises, agree to donate $10 for every new customer who gets their first service during that week. And he said that during that week in 2021, uh, they saw a 20% jump, 20% jump in sales compare, in comparison to the week around it. So yes, their team rallied around this, their team messaged this, but it paid off. It, it brought in new customers and it was a noticeable bump compared to other campaigns, sorry, compared to other weeks around it. 
There's also a, another kind of general supporting stat there about millennials. 71% of millennials, when they were surveyed, indicated that they would pay more for a product or service if they knew that some of those proceeds would be going to a, a charity or to support a good cause. And I can make kind of three other general points here. Uh, the first is that your partnerships, your nonprofit collaborations, your community work is also a great way for you to be able to connect with your local media. You're already the expert in your community and why there might be more rodents or what's happening with the ant population or why we're seeing more mosquitoes. But your partnerships and your collaborations provide another great way for you to reach out to your local media and, and elevate your brand as a company that is doing well by doing good and highlighting some work that you are doing locally in your community, nationally or internationally. The second point that I can make is that the partners that you have, it's also a great way to access their audience. Uh, most likely your partners are going to have some sort of tiered or scaled benefits for how you engage with them, but almost every organization is going to try to find some creative ways to acknowledge, appreciate, and thank partners that are powering their work and making it possible. So your partnerships provide another great way to access the audience of your partners and raise awareness, raise brand visibility, raise credibility with their audience. So you're able to get your message out and get your brand out. And the third thing is something that I call just the, the halo effect. It's the transference of goodwill and good energy when you associate with a reputable brand. So again, that could be local, that could be international but aligning your company with a reputable organization transfers some of that goodwill and some of that positive thinking uh, from that brand onto your company. So you can have the direct benefit of sales. You can uh, also think about it as a way to increase your brand visibility and get new eyeballs, get new potential customers in your pipeline by partnering and collaborating with uh, organizations so third polling question, have you ever tried a sales promotion with a donation element? So give this uh, 30 seconds or so. Again, the question is, have, you, have your, has your company ever tried a sales promotion with a donation element? Give another 10 seconds or so. Okay, mostly no. Uh, so that might be something to consider. I know a number of pest control companies have re referral incentives and new customer incentives uh, or kind of package incentives if a customer, if a current customer is adding on something. So that may be something to consider um, as part of a, a, an upcoming promotion or part of a sales season. So another area of uh, potential benefit for your company uh, through partnerships with nonprofits, uh, cause partners in your communities and, and around the world is assisting in your recruitment. A number of uh, potential employees are looking for not just kind of a job that they can clock in, clock out, but are looking for some purpose, are looking for something that's that they can align with and that they can feel proud about doing. And I, I wanna emphasize that as protectors of public health, there's already kind of a baseline of purpose in your work that you're providing safe and healthy environments and restaurants and businesses. So that's something that if you're not already doing, I would encourage you to emphasize in your hiring process is you're making homes safer and healthier, you're providing peace of mind, you're providing comfort. And as people might be spending more time around their homes, that's that's certainly critical and that's something that you can emphasize. Uh, but then once you engage with your nonprofit partners and you start to engage in some of these partnerships, uh, it's providing that added le level of purpose. It's providing an opportunity for your employees to maybe engage in a passion project or to align with a cause that they care about and to know that you as their employer are kind of supporting that and encouraging that uh, can help add to that purpose and help add to that culture and that buy-in so that once they are in the door, they're realizing that this is a company that cares about doing well by doing good and has alignments with organizations that 
I, I agree with and I value uh, and I want to be a part of. Uh, and you see a quote there from Vess Pearson, the CEO of Aptiv, talking about pers prospective employees, vendors, uh, prospective partners coming into their office with the knowledge, with the fami familiarity of their partnership with nothing but Nets and now United Beat Malaria and how that is seen and perceived as a positive thing for those that are coming to meet with Aptiv. So once the employee is in the door and you've uh, you've had the chance to train them and work with them. How can your partnerships help improve retention? Uh, again, a quote here from uh, another franchise owner, Lisa Lenai of Mosquito Joe of uh, Southwest Nashville, talking about building culture and using these partnerships to uh, improve the buy-in and improve the culture. And a couple of points here I can make. One, nonprofit partnerships are a great way to build cross-functional teams within your organization to have a culture committee or something like that where people are coming together from different teams to talk about different partnerships, different causes that they want to support and how your company wants to activate them, bring them to life in a way that is going to be meaningful and important. So you can have these committees that are assessing these opportunities, coming up with creative ways that are going to uh, speak to your employees in a way that is unique to your culture and a, unique to your company. And the second point I can make here is bringing in younger employees, this can be a, a passion project for them. It's a great way to give uh, younger employees, early career employees, a chance to do some project, manage, project management, to do some partner stewardship, partner management. So providing the opportunity for younger employees to embrace these partnerships, to lead on these partnerships, and then kind of find ways to engage uh, their peers and others within the company. On the right side of the slide here is a photo from our legislative day. We call it a leadership summit back in March and it's employees from Cotopaxi and Aptiv, uh, two companies based in Utah, meeting with representative Blake Moore of Utah and Cotopaxi and Utah, both, or sorry, Cotopaxi and Aptiv both sent employees and found it to be a very meaningful and impactful experience for them to come to our leadership summit to learn more about really the inside baseball of the fight against malaria and what their companies were doing and come away inspired to want to do more and proud of the work that their companies were already doing to help uh, advance the fight against malaria and protect families and really thinking about ways that they can do more. So it creates this uh, feedback loop of companies that are doing well and identifying good causes, employees that are buying in and more invested uh, and then want to do more and want to be more involved with their company. So what I've covered so far, you could really apply to uh, almost any of your partnerships kind of across the spectrum. But if I can make a few points here about why you might want to consider partnering with United to Beat Malaria. Uh, the first here is because you protect public health and our work in fighting malaria is a logical extension of that. Mosquitoes are a public health threat. Generally here in the U.S., they are a nuisance. I know the Tripoli is a concern. We've had uh, Zika issues. So generally speaking, mosquitoes are a nuisance here in the U.S., but obviously for about half the world's population, uh, about 4 billion people, mosquitoes are a deadly threat. And engaging with United to Beat Malaria, engaging in the fight against malaria is a logical extension of that messaging as your company as a protector of public health. So that's something that your employees will get, your customers will get, and it really enhances that message. Two, malaria is a winnable fight. Uh, I've mentioned numerous times, it's preventable, it's treatable. Both of those things are true. Uh, so no one should be dying. We should not have a child dying every minute from this disease. And more tools are in the pipeline. You may have heard about the vaccine that was approved in 2021. There are more vaccines and more effective vaccines that are being tested right now. So this is something that we can end within our lifetimes, but we need partners. We need people who are engaging with this and finding unique and creative ways that they can support this that really aligns with their company and their values. Malaria is also a bipartisan cause. There is broad support on both sides of the political spectrum that people should not be dying from a mosquito bite. 
uh, I can highlight Senator Roger Wicker of Mississippi. He has been a great champion of ours in the fight against malaria. So it is not something that you need to feel any sort of hesitation or trepidation about. There is broad support from both sides of the aisle that people should not be dying from a mosquito bite. The fourth point here is that you can be, be creative and have fun with our campaign. Yes, malaria is a very serious disease and unfortunately it is far too deadly. But how we raise funds for it, how we raise awareness for it can be creative and engaging. I have some examples of that in the coming slide, but that's something I would encourage you to think about and encourage you to lean into is finding something that could be creative and fun for your employees that would also have impact and uh, support families around the world. And the fifth point here is, I like to say that I provide excellent customer service, realizing that uh, there are a number of worthy causes out there and I work very hard to make sure that I am resourcing partners and prospective partners with the information needed to really carry this campaign forward and make it meaningful for your stakeholders, for your employees and potential customers. So a couple examples here. The first one is United States Liability Insurance. Uh, they're a small business insurance company based in Wayne, Pennsylvania, Southeast Pennsylvania. And I like to highlight them because they activate their partnership almost entirely through employee engagement. So they come up with these creative and fun engagements uh, like raffles, like a 5K. They did a lip sync competition last year where they have a platform where employees recorded themselves lip syncing a video and then employees around the company could vote with donations for which one they liked the best. On the right side of the screen there is a screenshot from their nothing but net uh, trick shot competition kind of going back to our old name. So they encourage people to submit videos uh, of themselves or their kids uh, making, making baskets in creative fun ways. So they do a number of these, probably more than a dozen a year uh, that engage their employees. And I'll also point out that USLI is the only company that has been a partner with us since the inception of the campaign. So they have a 17 year history of engaging employees, finding ways to be creative, to be impactful, but also to provide a little bit of education that might allow their employees to go out and learn more on their own and decide to become involved on their own in a way that feels authentic to them. Our second partnership example, uh, and this is one I love to highlight because of its creativity, uh, comes, comes to us from University of Notre Dame, uh, St. Edwards Hall, and it's the Mullets Against Malaria campaign. Uh, and something that they have done every year since 2013. Uh, and on the appointed day, usually it's late January, early February, the gentlemen of St. Edwards Hall, all 60 or 70 of them, will have their hair cut into a mullet and they can't get rid of that mullet until they reach their fundraising goal. And this has been a tremendously successful campaign for them. It's gotten great attention for the cause and for their, uh, for their dorm uh, at Notre Dame and through our channels as well. This is something that we like to highlight. So again, this has been about a 10 year campaign, um, which leads to the next polling question of how much money do you think Mullets Against Malaria has raised since 2013. A is $45,000, B is $70,000, C is $90,000, and D is $115,000. So pause there, uh, give you a chance to answer. Give it another 10 seconds or so. All right. 115,000, that's correct. Uh, you, uh, most people might not think it, but it's been a, cr a tremendously successful campaign. So that $115,000 translates into about 40,000 people who have been protected from this creative fund campaign. Uh, so it's, again, that great example of creativity blending with uh, impact and authenticity for uh, the gentleman at St. Edwards Hall. So a few things I can highlight on this side that uh, for you to consider about a potential partnership. 
Uh, and I look to try to create partnerships that blend all three that have a messaging or communications component alongside fundraising and employee engagement. But maybe there's something smaller that we can start with. Uh, but in messaging, we have a partner toolkit that we've created that we share with partners that has top line messaging, stats, template social media posts, high res photos, basically anything that you might need to kind of start your partnership uh, and message that partnership to your stakeholders. Fundraising, I provide some examples and we've kind of talked about those a bit, donating for new customers or referral of a customer, donating for bundled services. Uh, there are any number of ways that you can engage your employees, your customers and your community to have an impactful partnership, uh, to be raising money to send uh, in support of uh, protecting families around the world. And then this can kind of overlap with employee engagement. So you might have some employee engagement opportunities uh, that could be also fundraising. I'll also note here that our advocacy program is a great way to engage your employees. Uh, we have a team of three people with United to Beat Malaria who are focused on our advocacy work, who provide great trainings. And again, malaria as a bipartisan cause is a great way to, for your company to make connections with elected officials around a topic that is going to be well-received, that is going to be heard and you can then use those connections uh, for your own for your own business and for your own conversations down the road. So again, messaging, fundraising, and employee engagement, great to package all three, but sometimes it's not always uh, feasible or you want to start off with something smaller. And so happy to kind of collaborate with you and figure out what's going to be best uh, for your employees and your stakeholders. So this slide here, um, just a quick shout out to our partners across the industry. And I wanna note here that this, uh, I hope this shows kind of a full spectrum of partners. Yes, we work with uh, national companies that have footprint across the country. And then we also work with companies that are local or more regional. So there is a place for everyone within this campaign. And I hope that is something that can kind of come come through clearly for you is that you don't have to be a big company to be able to have impact and to be able to have a partnership that is going to be meaningful and that is going to uh, help protect families and move this campaign and move this uh, cause forward. So last slide here has all of our social media channels and one final Venn diagram, a two part Venn diagram uh, with United to Beat Malaria and your company uh, coming together to form a life saving partnership. Uh, so I would welcome any questions, but want to give a quick thank you again to Michelle and Lynn from Field Rounds for the opportunity to speak with you, uh, for the opportunity to kind of talk about our work. I hope to hear from you. I hope you'll consider reaching out because uh, we can do some great things together to help uh, end one of the world's oldest and deadliest diseases. Well, thank you so much, Jonathan, for all of the information. And I'm, I am guessing that our audience does have some questions for you. So everyone, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and submit any questions you have for Jonathan using the Q&A dialogue box on the side of your screen. He will answer as many questions as possible in the time that we have left. And while you're doing that, I'll ask that Lynn, our moderator, highlight the button at the bottom of your screen where you can sign up for a free demo of Field Routes. And for anyone who is not already a Field Routes customer, this is a great opportunity to experience our operations and marketing suites firsthand. More information about United to Beat Malaria may be found via the links beneath Jonathan's picture on the right side of your screen. All right, so to the questions. Number one, my company would be interested in collaborating with United to Beat Malaria. What would that look like? Great. So uh, great question. I think uh, a great opportunity is actually coming up in a couple months, and I think that gives us some time to plan. Uh, World Mosquito Day is coming up on August 20th, uh, and that is a day to commemorate the discovery that mosquitoes transmitted malaria. Um, so that is a moment of uh, messaging for us, and I think we can collaborate to come up with maybe a short-term fundraising option, whether that's you know, for a one-time mosquito add-on or to add on a mosquito service. 
And then we'll also have dedicated messaging around that time. So we'll have some template social media posts that we can provide to you that you can share on your channels. Uh, and then we could also, if you wanted to look at some sort of employee engagement component of what is something fun that we could do uh, in collaboration. One thing I wanted to mention in the presentation, uh, I would love to work with somebody on a mini golf fundraiser. I've already got the name putting to protect. Uh, so maybe that's something that fun that your employees could do kind of around this world mosquito day, August 20th moment where you're sharing some social media messaging. You're doing maybe a one-off short-term fundraiser to test the waters to see what a partnership might look like and what kind of activity you're getting and interest you're getting. And then you're having a moment uh, with your employees that could be something fun, or maybe I am uh, doing a virtual kind of brown bag lunch uh, where I'm talking to employees about uh, about the work and about the importance of engagement in, in uh, the fight against malaria. So thank you for that question. I'm kind of getting excited for um, putting to protect. I like that idea. Oh, I've got <laughs> a lot. That was just the top line. I've got a lot more to add to it. So. Okay, we'll talk later. Yeah. <laughs> um, our next question, does United to Beat Malaria have staff in countries where this work is happening? Uh, thank you, Michelle. Yes, that is uh, an important distinction to make. So a lot of our work happens in collaboration with UN agencies. Uh, so United to Beat Malaria is a campaign of the United Nations Foundation. So we do not actually have and boots on the ground, so to speak. We collaborate with groups that are on the ground that have those relationships. Uh, UNICEF working primarily with children, UNHCR working primarily with displaced populations. We do have some groups outside of the UN that we also collaborate with that receive the funding and then do the actual implementation on the ground uh, to reach families and protect families. Uh, so that is an important distinction to make um, that we are not actively on the ground that we collaborate with local entities. Okay. Well, that is actually all the time that we have for today. I want to thank you again, Jonathan. We really appreciate you being here with us today. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Michelle. Appreciate the opportunity. And again, grateful to Field Routes for your partnership and uh, looking forward to conversations to come. Absolutely. And thank you to all of our attendees for joining us as well. We hope that you found this valuable. Remember to watch your inbox and social media feeds for information on our upcoming growth series and tips and tricks series webinars. Everyone have a great day.